are excited to have with us this afternoon the best that the Lord has prepared for us. All I can say is for us to open our hearts and be ready for what God wants to do. And I believe that what others will come to look for in you, you will come to testify about. So please, with Jesus joy, let's put our hands together as we welcome the man of God, Reverend Gideon. There's no place for our human. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to end. There's no place for our human. Oh, you are God all by yourself. From beginning to there's no place for a human. Oh, you are God of yourself. And so, our Father and God, we thank you for this exclusive, wonderful privilege you've given to us to gather in your presence, to seek your face, even at all times. When people are busy chasing mundane things, for you've given us the access to come into your presence. Lord, we can't come to seek you in vain because you have asked not the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. Lord, on this mountain, let matters be settled. Lord, on this mountain, let answers be given to prayers. Lord, on this mountain, let solution come. Let nobody live here the same way you or she came in here. Lord, on this mountain, let there be transfiguration. Lord, on this mountain, let there be divine transactions. Lord, on this mountain, let there be surplus miracles. What the government cannot provide for us on this mountain, supply them. Let none of the word that comes from my mouth fall to the ground. Let every destiny that receives the word this afternoon receive the fruitful dimension of the word. We ask that the heaven be opened over this mountain. Let no word go unfulfilled. Thank you, King of Glory. We receive divine back in this afternoon. It's not how long the man stays in your presence that counts. It's the connection that makes the, the connection to be possible. Therefore, my Father, let the grace of my life speak this hour. Let everyone who is connecting from all over the world receive a divine touch from you. Thank you, King of Glory. Let the revival that Abedin is waiting for, let it start from this church. Let the blind see, let the lame walk, let the cripple walk, let the dead rise, let the sick be healed, let the captives be set free, let the unsaved be saved, let the poor become rich, let the downcasted become lifted, let the non-entity become a celebrity. Thank you, Father, for Jesus' matchless name we pray. Please, may you jam your hands together for Jesus. Glory to God. Please kindly take your seat in God's presence. Numbers does not make a great church. We can be 1,000, but that does not mean that that's a great church. Away from the statistics of men and how men view a great church, God has his own way of measuring a great church. It is the people in the church that count on the greatness of our God. I want to salute God's servant. I've heard so much about him, and it's my honor and my privilege to be here to see for myself that this is one of the most likely.
lively churches in Hamburg. Please, I want you to salute and celebrate the grace of God for Pastor Gakwa and his wife. From the day we connected, we've been like brothers to God. We had deep talks, and the relationship has been mutual. Even though we stay a little bit far from each other, but we know things about each other. And I celebrate the grace of God from the right side. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord increase you, may the Lord multiply you and your family. And may those who are saying men may also partake from the grace. Bring greetings from my wife. I will do more of that in the evening because of our time factor. I just want to just chip in something, set the stage, set the foundation, and then tonight it will be fire for fire. I believe strongly that your time has come. The most dangerous man on earth is the man that is time has actually come. Because at that point, when your time peaks, that's when the devil in your life or the devils in your life become incapacitated. Because when your hour comes, it becomes your hour of deliverance, your hour of total restoration, your hour of victory. At that point, there's nothing that the devil can do. Until his time came, the word of God tried it, and the king sent for him. There is always a start and an end. There's always a beginning and an end. So, for somebody this is your best half of this year. It may not look like it right now, but I want you to be expectant. When I was entering this year, I knew that God would be doing some strange things. I was saying it then. I said it in um, the Leicester Church, Redeemed Christian Church of God, because I crossed them into 2019. And I was telling them, I said, hey guys, I'm seeing greatness in 2019. I'm seeing God opening some kind of doors. Beloved, what God did for me, I don't know about you, from January to June, I can't recover from it. I'm telling you, it has been my best year so far. And if God can do the much that he has done now, then you can imagine what will happen between this July and December. The Bible says, surely there is an end. For the expectation of the righteous will not be cut off. It is your expectation that determines your manifestation. Not even the laying on of hands, because pastors can join hands together to lay hands on you, and yet nothing happens. You can even con- they can even conduct anointing service for you, and yet there is no impartation. Why? Because your expectation has not justified your experience. My prayer for you is that between July and December, your matter will be settled. No matter how battered and how shattered you are right now, there is hope. For a tree that is cut down. The Bible says, at the scent of water, it will sprout again. The end has not come. God is the one that determines the end. The finality of all, of, of all matter is here. That the righteous judge is in the house to determine what will happen to you. I prophesy, from this seventh month, there shall be a mighty release upon your life. The things that eyes have not seen, the things that ears have not heard, the things that has, no, has never entered into the heart of any man, those are the things that God will be doing. Catalogs of miracles, catalogs of breakthroughs, and exodus of, of blessings. Those are the things that God will be marshalling into your life if you have been let your end and be the last He You say he cannot do anything except he reveal it to his servant, the prophet. We have come to echo what God has said. And if you have ears, the Bible says, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. God is not in the class of men. God is not in the category of men. He does not run by the timetables of men. He runs by his own schedule. Oh yes, he is Jehovah overdue. Jehovah Shammah is here with us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your destiny will not reject prophecy. Permit me to take my bearing from the book of Acts, chapter number 3, and then we just, you know, lift one or two things out of the pages of the scripture, and then we get set for the evening. Acts, chapter 3, verse 1. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. This is our own hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. He was lame not because it was his choice. 
he was lame not because he decided to be lame. There are situations a man finds himself in that he never chose it. He never decided it. They just happen. Life can be very funny at times. That things happen that you did not plan for. Oh, yes. This man was lame not because he loved to be lame. But somehow life has put him in one corner. Because to be lame means to be a burden on people. To be lame means you are living on other people's economy. To be lame means that you can't do things for yourself. You have to linger. You have to depend. You have to lean on people to survive. Sir, life can be more better than this. The 10, 10 pounds that people are actually running after in this country makes them to be lame economically. Because that means the, 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 the pounds that they are receiving is only creating survival for them. They are not actually living in the purpose of God for their lives. Yes. To be lame means you are limited to some certain... You know, when they are paying you 10 pounds per hour, 15 pounds per hour, they can actually determine what you are earning. They can actually determine your spending scope. There are certain things that you like, but your hand can't reach them because why? Your pocket is denying you the fact. God's prosperity agenda is away from the salary you think you're collecting or the wages that you're entitled to. I've never seen anybody that prosper through salary. Mention one. When God was promising that He was going to prosper you, He was not factoring in the pounds that you are, you are meant to collect from somebody. The prosperity agenda of God exceeds the budget of the Scottish government. The prosperity agenda of God exceeds the nation you're coming from. It even goes beyond the color of your skin. The prosperity agenda of God is based on the economy of heaven. That is, you can be in Scotland and still be controlling the Eastern Europe. You can be in Scotland and be controlling the entire United Kingdom. If you don't expect it, you cannot experience it. Don't be religious about this. God's prosperity agenda is far from what we are earning right now. That's why I don't look at what I'm earning right now. I'm looking at where God is taking me to. Because we are all on a journey. And in the name of Jesus Christ, if you are quick to say amen, you will get there. A man was lame, yet we don't know his name. The lamenessness of this man has, de has deprived him of becoming a great man or to have a great name. There's a way your situation will give you a name. That poor man, that failure, that barren woman, that, that crippled man. Because the world don't see anything more valuable to your life than your situation. And your situation should not be your full stop. Your situation should be a, 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 a pedal, should be a spring a springboard for divine intervention. How can God be glorified in your life if you don't go through things? How can God be magnified in your life if you are not interfaced with challenges? Sir, today marks a new beginning in somebody's life. That situation will not kill you. You are coming out of that challenges. Can I hear your amen louder? Very quick. Men are very quick to judge you. Men are very quick to size you up. Men are very quick to name you in line with what you are going through. But they don't see this other side because it's only God that can interpret your life. You can be poor in the afternoon and be rich in the night. It's not a prerogative of anybody to decide on how much you earn. That's why you must not deliver your life into people's hands. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus knew who men were. So he never committed himself to them. Because he knows that men are chameleons. They can change and they can choose at any time. The only person that is constant in life and the whole universe is our God. Can we give Jesus a clap also? A certain man was slain from his mother's womb, was carried. When they carry you, they can drop you. But when God carry you, you are sure that you can never drop. Remember what he said in Psalm, in, in First Samuel chapter two, from verse eight downward. He said he make he, he raised the poor from the dust. He raised the beggar from the dung here. Whoever God raises up cannot be erased. Please let us settle this cause. 
giving your life, your decision, and your, your destiny to man is not the best thing that you can do for yourself. This is what you can do. This is the best thing you can do. That you have come to commit your destiny to the hand of the one who can carry you and carry you through. Who can carry you and never drop you. Who can carry you and never be tired of your ways. Who can carry you and never change his mind. Even when you are messing up, he's still carrying you. He said, I understand because you are still a baby. You will have go this level. Sir, God is in your, on your matter. And he will settle it for you this afternoon. If you are here, let the end be the loudest. As soon as they carry him, they drop him. Guess what? Men will always drop you where they want. They will always want to put you where they want to put you. They will always want to lock you up so that you can be discovered easily. They will want to put you where they, you can be pitied. Sir, life does not run on pity. Life is run on being enviable. What God has planned for us is not for us to be pitied. When somebody gives you 100 pounds, that's not what God's plan for you. When God somebody gives you 200 pounds, 1,000 pounds, that is a way from God's we are talking about God's prospective agenda. All those words are pillows. They are just picking you. That's why they give you what they give to you. But the truth is, when God wants to show up, He pushes 100,000 pounds into you. He pushes 1 million pounds to you. Let me tell you, as, I, as you see this tiny young man here, I know that in this city, a day is going to come. I will be moving with a million pounds. I will be moving with a billion pounds. You don't like it, that is your problem. You are part of the witches, that is your problem. I am talking about myself, I'm not talking about you. If you know what the dividends you receive by saying positive things into your life, you will never, never doubt what you say. A lot of people don't know that this year, God can still make them to have close to 50,000 pounds in their bank account. He does it. He does it that men should fear him. He said, he said, he, he, he said, he said, he's the one who does, who do do something that cannot be removed. He said, whatsoever God do it, he, nothing can be added to him, nothing can be removed. He does it that men to fear him. May God do fearful things in your life. There are things that God will do that will humble your mockers. There are things that God will do that will humble those who are asking questions. You have spent, you have spent X, Y, Z years in this country. How far? They keep asking you, how far? From home, they call you, ah, ah, we are not seeing things from you. How far? Wait. When God starts with you, the questions will cease. That is why it is your time. Somebody say, it is my time. Come on, I didn't hear you say, it's my time. I want you to jump back and say it is my turn. I want all the witches in the battle to hear you say it is my turn. Say it, Mr. I'm back and forth. Say it, Mr. I'm back and forth. I'm back and out. I'm back and forth. I'm back and forth to the right. I'm back and forth to the left. I'm back and forth to the front. I'm back and forth to the back. I'm back and forth to the other side. Says when the cloud is full, it empty itself upon the earth. That means that when there is no load up, there is no delivery. When there is no load up, there is no promoting. As you are making the creation, the cloud is already receiving instruction. And that's what the Bible says. Ask the Lord in the day of the light of rain, He will make bright cloud. In the name of Jesus, the cloud will release rain. The cloud will release favor. Your God will release power. Your God will release prosperity. Can I hear your amen if you are there? See that for just a few minutes before we pray. We're talking about a, a man, a man's story that is a bedrock to our manifestation this afternoon. Nothing enters into the scripture by the state. It's not just a story. This is a connection to the miraculous. The Bible says this man was carried. Carried every time. And whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple. Why is it that they don't carry him into the temple? Why do they have to leave him by the gate? Men want to get you because why they feel you are not qualified. So the Bible says he used the poor, the weak things of this world to confirm those things that are strong. He used those things that are that is significant to confirm to, to confirm those things that are, are that seemingly become relevant. Let me tell you, your size cannot intimidate God. Your problem cannot harass God. 
All you need is for you to be connected to Him. Once you are connected, things start to happen. The Bible says they carried him and put him at the gate. How can you be beside the pool and yet you don't you, are, you don't experience being watered by the pool? How can you be in a place like this? You enter a church like this, you sit in a service like this, and nothing is impacting you. How can you be by the table when you are serving the food and yet they say it's not your turn to eat? That is the most wicked thing on earth that you can ever experience in your life. They know that there's an opportunity, yet they will not tell you. They know that if you go through that door, it will lead you to your next level, yet they shut it against you. That is what men do, because they don't want you to outshine them, but you've made a blunder. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Because the Bible says, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Put it on the screen for me. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. I want you to know what this time is. And do this, and, and do this, knowing the time. That what? That now it is high time to awake out to sleep. That is, it is time for your glory to awake. It is time for your destiny to awake. If anything in your life is sleeping, it is time for God to wake them up. Because this is the high time. I don't know whether you are hearing something mysterious. Because I am ready. Because something needs to wake up. When your destiny wake up, all your helpers will wake up. When your destiny wake up, when your glory wake up, let me tell you, everything that has to do with you wakes up together. I pray for somebody here. Your time for your destiny to wake up has finally come. Those that need to discover you, they will start to discover you. Those that need to hear you, they will start to hear about you. Those that need to see you, will start to meet with you. There are appointments that lead to your appointment. At the three, may you begin to receive those appointments. Can I hear you? Amen. Louder. The people you meet determine what you get. You must settle that with you. When Joseph interpreted the dream to the prisoner, he remained in the prison. But the day he interpreted the dream, to the king in the palace, he was stationed in the palace. He became a prime minister. That is why, when you meet with mean men, you get mean results. But when you meet with kings, you get kingly reward. Lift your two hands above your head. I want to prophesy to you in a hurry that beginning from this afternoon, favor will begin to smell on you. The glory of God begins to radiate in your eyes. There shall be full scale demonstration of God's power in your life. Can I hear your amen louder? Can I hear your amen louder? Ladies and gentlemen, one of the keys that you must never throw away, I want to share it with you if I see it. The Bible says, Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple? Acts and out. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them. This is the most interesting part, verse 5. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Let me tell you, sir. Until you pay attention, you cannot be attended to. You can't do anything about this. This is the syllabus of heaven. If you are in this church, in a meeting like this, and you don't pay close attention to the lyrics of God's words, for the prophetic trumpet that you are receiving, you don't pay close attention. Your mind is divided. You are thinking of what you are owing. You are thinking of the renter. You are thinking of uh, somebody who is calling you. You are thinking of, hey, I need to quickly go and rush away. And you don't pay close attention to what God is doing at the moment, at that hour. You will not be attended to. Everyone who receives exclusive miracles, they never divided their attention. They concentrated their attention on the one who can do all things. Who can do all things. Sir, the guy knew that if he missed that day, he may not recover from it. Because there is always a day for a man. Until you reconcile that within yourself, that this is your day, you cannot partake from the blessing of that day. For he has daily loaded every day with benefits. In the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing that brought me to Abaddon, for the deliverance and for the shift of somebody. May you pay attention to that anointing. May you pay attention to that grace. 
May the anointing settle your scores, settle your matter, settle your home, settle your documents, settle your house, settle your accommodation, settle your job, settle your finances. If you are dead, let your aim and start the devil on his face. Expecting to receive. It is righteous thing for you to expect. It is unrighteous for you to not to expect. For your expectation is the breeding ground for the miraculous. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I believe God that it does not take God's century to settle a man. Within a few minutes, God can step into that matter. You know what is going on. That you can't even discuss with your pastor. You know what you are facing. That everybody does do not know that this is your trouble. But you can actually talk to God right now. I like you to lift your two hands to heaven and begin to communicate your heartfelt prayer to God. When Anna came into a temple like this, she did not just fulfill religion. She went ahead, went beyond the service, went beyond the religion, and decided to pour a heartfelt prayer to God. Lord, how can I be beautiful and be barren? How can I have prophecy and become a pauper? How can I be a child of the Most High and I'm low when it comes to economy in life? God, why are things working contrary in my life? Why am I not gaining speed? Why am I slowed down? Oh God, help me settle this matter. Can you go ahead and speak to God? Can you go ahead and, and pour out your heart of prayer? This is the most golden opportunity that the Holy Ghost can give to you. You have not come to seek any man. You have not come to seek any pastor. But you have come to seek God. The God who answered by fire. The God who does not follow the protocol of any man. The God who does not consider your past to bless you. The God who is beyond your past or present and your future. The Alpha and the Omega. The Omnipotent God. The Omniscience God. The Omnipresent God. The Jehovah Overdue. The Jehovah Shammah. He's the one that is in our midst. Say the Lord God in the midst of thee is mighty. Mighty to save. Mighty to bless. Mighty to deliver. Mighty to heal. Tell them what God cannot do. He is not the God that cannot speak. He is not the God that cannot heal. He is not the God that cannot move. He is the God of all flesh. There is nothing that is too hard. It's nothing. It's nothing. Don't hold anything back. Don't hold anything back. If you can call the names of those things, call them by name. If you can call those names, call them by name. Lord, fix my husband for me. Fix my wife for me. Fix my children for me. Fix my job for me. Fix my finances for me. Fix my boss for me. Fix my project for me. Fix fix this. Fix my heart for me. You are the only one that can do it. I've not turned to any man, but I've turned to you, my father, in this on this mountain. Answer my prayers. Do what only you can do. Honor your name in this tabernacle. Honor your name in this tabernacle. Let this time come for me. Let this become my own time. Let it become my own moment. I refuse to go back the way I came in here. You have waited for me. Let this become my own time. In the name that is above every other name. Is somebody praying? Is somebody pouring out his heart? For if there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. He does not stop prayers. He does not ban prayers. He answers prayers. That's the God that we serve. I need somebody to ask God what is very terrible. I need somebody to ask God something that is incredible. Lord, give me this city. Give me this city. Give me this city. Give me this nation. Don't let me be among those who are just floating. Give me this city. Give me a name in this city. Give me a voice in this city. Give me a name in this city. Give me a voice in this city. If you close your mouth, you have closed your destiny. I don't care who you are. If you close your mouth, you have closed your destiny. There is a God that answers. There is a God that hears the petition of his own children. He will not abandon you. He will not put his ears to you. His ears are not there to hear you. Neither is his hand shortened to say, no matter how bad the situation is, he can step in. He can step in. He can help out. He's Jehovah Ebenezer, our very present help in the time of trouble. I need those who can groan in the 
spirit and the those who can grow in the spirit. When you speak in tongues, you are speaking mysteries. When you speak in tongues, uh, you are giving others, others to spiritual elements. in this house. This is one of the headquarters of revival. And let me tell you, <laughs> within the next 365 days from today, you will see the move of God in a different form. There will be massive inflow, massive inflow of flocks from all across Aberdeen and beyond Aberdeen. He said, and your sons and your daughters will come from far. He said, the, the things will come to the brightness of thy light. 
People will be traveling from London to attend service here. It's a new wave. It's a new wave. It's a new wave. Tonight, I beg you in the name of Jesus, don't miss tonight's service. Come with your families, come with your friends. Meetings like these are not normal meetings. They are not protocol meetings. I say, well, this is not a program. This is a prophetic gathering. And in the prophetic garden, anything can happen. We are not playing church here. We are not playing religion here. Let them leave whatever they are doing and raise down to this place. Because God will be setting matters this evening. Lift your two hands to heaven and thank Him in advance. Thank Him in advance because phone calls will begin to ring. SMS will begin to come in. Good news will begin to come in. Give Him all the praise, somebody. Worship Him. Thank him in advance. Appreciation is an application for more. Appreciation is an application for more. Give him all the praise. Let's stretch our hands in the direction of the man of God and pray from the depth of our hearts. Let's pray for him, first of all, that the Lord King of glory will bless him, even as he has been a great blessing. Two in one prayer, that the Lord will refresh him for this evening, that what we have seen just now will be nothing compared to what the Lord will do this evening in the name of Jesus. Pray from the depth of your heart to release the blessing. He that has been watered should be watered also, should water also. He that has been watered should water also. Speak from your heart, speak with the blessing. Speak with passion. Speak with expectation. Speak with desire. Pray the way you will pray for yourself. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray that the Lord that brought him to Aberdeen, the reason for bringing him shall be accomplished. In the name of Jesus. If we hear mighty testimonies, Lord, we bless you. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.